All right, good morning, everyone. Last this is, okay. The last time we learned <coughs> that Jacob, Yaakov, he married two sisters and that he gave birth to 11 sons. Twelve, well, in this chapter, in this chapter 11, finally, in the end, he gives, back, gives birth to, to Benjamin, but that's when they're already traveling on. So, okay, he's going to give birth to 12 sons. <clears throat> so we said like this, what is the whole point of Judaism? The point of Judaism is to recognize what God is and to get excited about it. And in fact, even more, that when you really recognize what God is, you almost automatically get excited about it because God is creating us. <clears throat> so if you have any sort of emotions about yourself, like if somebody calls you a bad name or somebody, you know, steals your whatever it is or somebody gives you a praise or you, you win money it's when something good happens or bad happens if it happens to you so you get excited about it that's natural well that's how much more so you should get excited about god because god is creating you so to, when a person feels this he starts to get emotional about god and from that it inspires him that he wants to do what god requests Turning from bad, doing good. Let me just see this here. We got over here. Oh, that's this. I'm mute. I'm going to mute a couple of people. Nothing personal over here. Okay, here we go. So <clears throat> that's the whole. That's the. That's the point. A person that recognizes and feels how real the Creator is, and how He is creating us, and He's creating all these spiritual worlds. And he took us out of Egypt and et cetera, and et cetera. When he recognizes this, then he will have tremendous love for God. And this love is available. It's there. Uh, something like, you know, whatever it's Columbus discovered America. He didn't invent America. He didn't <clears throat> produce America. He discovered it. The same thing as love is there waiting to be discovered. It's, a, it's reality. I mean, well, a person realizes he's, he's very lucky to be created. We're, here, we're lucky to be here every second, right? We're lucky, that, and the details for sure, we're also lucky. We're lucky to have eyes, we're lucky to have ears, but we're lucky to be alive, we're lucky to be created. <clears throat> it's, it's amazing fortune. Who's giving us all this amazing gifts is God. Well, when you realize this, you have love and fear of God. The only problem is that, you know, these ideas are very easy to talk about, but to actually do it, it's not so easy. <clears throat> you know, when I finish speaking to you and I, uh, you know, close this thing and talking about the greatness and love of God. So, you know, what I want is a nice little cookie or something or, a, you know, a drink of coffee that that'll that'll sort of, you know, satisfy me, <clears throat> at least for the next, next you know, couple of minutes. I'm going to go and pray and I don't want to get hungry. So that's what I'm concerned with. Really, okay, to, to, to have something to eat is not so bad. You know, it's not. It's a good thing. You have to. You have to eat. But that's our main love should be constantly to the Creator. What can I do to serve my Creator? Okay, but but it's not. Why is it not? Because to be like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to access these aspects of God which they revealed is very very difficult. <clears throat> it's very difficult. It's almost like let's say let's take our our, our metaphor that we gave. You know, you discover America. It's very wonderful, but it's hard. You got to get on the on the you know the the, the, the on a ship. You know, then what is it? Nina and the Pita and or something like that. You have to get on these ships and you <coughs> travel across the ocean, and you have to get them. That's not easy to do. You know, to, to to reveal godliness. I mean, I don't want to get too physical about it, but you know, you want to reveal godliness. Godliness is very difficult. We're, we're very stuck <coughs> in feeling our own selves, and naturally, so that's the way God made it. The world is called Olam Helam. It's concealed. So therefore, God said, okay, I, I realize this. So therefore, the Torah tells us that there's these things called the tribes, the Shvatim. And these tribes make godliness more accessible. So we can feel godliness. Let's take to take our met metaphor a little bit, maybe more ridiculous. So it's a person, it's difficult for him to, 
you know, travel all the way to America to discover America. So he stays at home and he looks at videos about America. Right, look at those videos. You know, we want to look at what the how was, what does the mountains look like? What are the prairies? What are the oceans bright with foam? Or this? You want to look at the whole thing. You can see it on the <clears throat> on the uh, <coughs> on the internet. So it's the same thing. Godliness, godliness. It's very very difficult for us to really feel because we feel ourselves. That's the most natural thing. So therefore, there is the tribes, the shvatim, and they made godliness more accessible to us. Each and every person according to his ability. And then the Rebbe starts explaining that how do you get to this? And he explains, just like I said before, you start to think about how great God is, how wonderful God is. Now God is much more accessible. We can feel the creator more in a real way, right? Now what we're doing in this, in, in this we're sort of like, you know, reading the, the, uh, the advertisements on why to look at, uh, you know, America, in the in the uh, vi videos of America, <clears throat> we, we were learning about what God is, and but when you actually sit down and you actually start to think, God is creating me. God is really real. God really cares about me. God, I am really important to God. <clears throat> God has creates the angels. Took all of His energy and His time to come and create little me. Here I am. You start to think about this. You think, well, God creates the angels. That's also pretty pretty amazing. You know, God creates some angels. It must be really real. He creates the mountains, creates this. <clears throat> I think I told you this story, but I want to tell it to you again. I want to tell you it to you again. Because I think it's a very, very instructive story. There was once a very simple man, a simple Jew. And he saw that when the rabbi prays, <clears throat> the rabbi prays, is that the rabbi really gets emotional, truly emotional about God. He sees that he's really genuinely, he's not faking it, really emotional. So he would really, so he goes to the rabbi and he asks him, <clears throat> How do I do that? So the rabbi explains it to him, the things I'm explaining to you now. So he, he, th he comes back a couple of days later, says, Rabbi, I, I just, you know, I thought of all those things and I just don't get it. You know, I just don't, I, 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 I you know, I, I understand a little bit, but you know, God creates me. I, just, I don't feel anything. I don't. So the rabbi goes over very, very slowly and tells him, and he tries that also doesn't work. Doesn't get emotional. So the rabbi says, listen, did anything ever emotional happen to you in your life? Anything that, let's say, scared you? I said, oh, Rabbi, I don't even like to think about it. One time I went out in the, in, the, in the courtyard to feed the chickens, and one of the turkeys got mad at me for some reason, and he attacked me. And turkeys are like, they has this huge wingspan, you know, like, you know, eight feet or something like that. And he attacked me and he was, you know, gobbling and, blah, 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 and, he was that, and I was so scared. So the rabbi said, okay, every time when you say Shema Yisrael, think about that turkey and realize that God is bigger than that turkey, he creates the turkey. Okay, and after that, this man would say Shema Yisrael and he would just roll on the floor with fear and awe and trepidation. In other words, <coughs> to be real to us. So that's what the rabbi is saying. God is accessible to everybody, but not in his essence. So therefore we have the, the, the Shvatim. The Shvatim and the tribes, they uh, make God more accessible to us. But in order to really open this up, right? In order to open it up and to feel, so you have to think. You have to think and you have to get excited a little bit. You have to get a little bit excited. You have to want, you have to want to get excited. You have to want to sit down. You have to want to have some sort of a desire for godliness. But when you do, this is where my whole metaphor about the America and going to America and the videos, it all breaks down. God reacts. God is, is real. God, if you want to call it, is human. God actually reacts to what we do. This makes no sense whatsoever because we just finished saying that God is infinite. He's inaccessible. But the fact is, he, but we have to want, first of all, we have to want to be connected to God. I mean, you can live your life very fine without being connected to God. Billions of people do it, right? And for, for, for hundreds of generations without thinking about God whatsoever, and they live okay lives, you know, they get married, they do whatever they want. What, what, what would necessitate inside of us that we would even think, first of all, there is such thing of God as God and that it's, it's a good thing to get connected to him and that it's possible to connect to him. <clears throat> Okay, so we say, 
<coughs> okay, so we just explain, explained that when we turn to the creator and start to think about it, then God reacts and he gives us inspiration. In the language of Kabbalah, that's called eturuta de la tata, an arousal from above. Yeah. An arousal from above. In other words, God helps us, he gives us inspiration, but it depends on our eturuta de la tata, our, our arousal of God from below. Good. So when we turn to God and want godliness, we want to connect to God, then God reacts. That's eteruta de la tata, though it's talui, which depends on an arousal from eteruta de la eila, shahiyya talui betruta de la tata. An arousal from above, in other words, God reacts from above, because, but that depends on our acting from below. That's kind of called an arousal from below. Or in simple language, that we simply sit down and start to think. You can even open up your psalm book or your prayer book or whatever. And you say, you know, God, <clears throat> help me to feel you. Help me to love you. <clears throat> open up my mind. Open up my heart to have an appreciation of you, to connect to you. But right? that's this arousal from below. And God reacts. Good? Pretty simple. The only problem is, is where does this arousal from below come from? Huh? Where does it come from? Why, why would a person even sit down and say, you know, hey, I want God. I want God to connect. I want to connect to God. I want God. Please, God, help me. Why, why would a person even want to think like that? Like I said before, you can get along in life very fine without thinking about God or anything. So says the Rebbe, in order for there to be this original start, starting, that you start, and you want godliness, well, that doesn't come from you. There has to be, first of all, a little start from above. <coughs> and this comes from the source of the upper mercy, which is totally above the whole entire creation, physical, spiritual, the Sfirot with the Tzilut and everything, totally above that. <coughs> And we said that Jacob, Yaakov, he was this awareness of the mercy of God, but that that was too high of a level. So it had to come down into the tribes. And how do we draw, how do we access this thing of the tribes? We have to start off from down here and request. What makes us request? What makes us even think that we need to be connected to God or that it's possible to be connected to God or that it's worth anything to be connected to God, or there is such a thing as God at all to be connected to. <clears throat> what gives us this original idea to even get involved in this whole business? He says, that is a big blessing from God that starts the whole thing off. This is a tremendous aspect of mercy, which is above all of these levels that we've talked about. This is the source of all mercy. Or in simple language, we don't do anything on our own. I, a person would say, hey, what do you mean? I don't have any free will. I don't have anything. Well, not only you don't have any free will, we don't have free will. We don't have anything. We don't have any existence. We don't have our life, our bodies, our eyes, our mind. It's all incredible miracles. Everything comes from God. <coughs> And one of the most amazing miracles that we have is that we want to discover the truth. And we have this inkling, this feeling that the truth somehow or other is connected to this thing that we're talking about here, that there's a creator and that he cares about us and that he creates the upper worlds, he creates the stars, but he creates us and he creates the angels, but he cares what we do. <clears throat> the whole inkling that we have that maybe there is such a thing like that and that we can connect to him this comes from a tremendously high level of God's mercy, that cannot be grasped by anything in the whole, what does it say, the chain of creation at all. Not the angels, not the upper spheres. Like it says, 
like we say in the blessing right before Shimon, before Shema Yisrael in the morning. Eloke Olam, God of the world, Rabin, with your great mercy, with your great mercy, Rachamecha, your mercy. And there's a type of mercy which is not relevant to us at all. It's just when you decide to use it. And it's nothing that we can arouse. It's yours totally, God. Like we said in another place, Zev, that's what it means by Yashkin, Lovan. And this is represented by Ta da! Lovan, one of the most evil people in the whole Bible. That's the level that he represents. And it says, Vayashkin Lovan Baboker. Lovan woke up in the morning. Now you have to remember we have the, the Rachel and Leah and all the tribes. Lovin is the basis of all this. He's the, he is the father of Rachel and Leah. Lovin. Huh? So all these things we're talking about, these levels and etc., that all basically comes from Lovin. Perish, Lovin, the Kedusha, this is not the, the bad side of Lovin that we read about in the Bible. This is the good side. This is the source. Lovin, Lovin means white. <clears throat> What's the thing about white? The color white contains all the other colors. Ubechin is loven elyon. It's called the upper whiteness. Hainu bechin is or atzmuto, the light of God's essence. Shall orain sof borahu of the essence of God. Kamushal like mara v'gavan loven, just like the appearance or the color white. She'enu doma lekal amarot. It's not similar to any of the other colors. She'agavanim shalem that all of the other colors, right? Blue, green, red. They come by means of some sort of a, how do you say, a tint. Which is not the case, the appearance of, and the color white. This is the essence of the thing. It never changes. You put all the colors together, whatever you want to, you're never going to get white. White, the color white is, if you want to call it the source of all the other colors, the main thing, the, the color white, that's pure if you want to call it pure color, pure revelation. <clears throat> McCain, Walter of Marshall, and so it is, or in so the infinite light of God. That's why in Kabbalah, they refer to God as God's light. Right? The aspects of God are God's light. The same thing <coughs> as the light of God in his essence, the kavodo, in God's essence, in his very essential glory. The lace bake, beginus. Gavonim, there is no colors, there are no colors at all. The lace machshaba tafisa bay, there is no thought that can possibly be grasped. God, vani Hashem loshiniti, that's what it says, I am God and I never changed. <clears throat> what we read about in the Bible is after God created the world, right? That's why the Bible starts with the letter base, because the letter bait, that is number two. So the Bible starts off when God creates the world, but what was before the world? Number one, what's number one? God. One second. If God is before the world, means he was before time. Yes, of course. Time is just a creation. He was before consciousness. Of course, consciousness is a creation. He was before existence. Of course, existence. It was before spirit. Before, <clears throat> so it was before all these things, then he didn't really exist because there was no before and after. So that's right. God does not exist. God creates all existence. We have no way of understanding even the spiritual existence we don't understand. Right? We've talked about this a lot of times. But that still is nevertheless the aspect of God that he creates. That itself, the potential of God to create, that's called God's name. But what about the essence of God himself? So the essence of God himself is concerned with man. Jews first. The Jews are God's chosen people. The Jews are called the sons of God. The Jews are connected to this essence of God. And God <clears throat> wants them to serve him. But it has to come from us. But this desire that it comes from us, that also comes from God. And that comes from the highest, deepest aspect of God, which is <clears throat> not determined by anything. It's just pure godliness. It's not a level. It's not a name. <clears throat> this is something like the infinite light of God himself. The lace bake of is government. There's no colors at all. The lace machshava tafisa bay. There's no thought which can grasp in this aspect of God. It cannot be defined 
<clears throat> anyway, I'm Yeshem Lo Shaniti. I'm God. I never changed. What does he mean, God? He never changed. He created the whole world, didn't he? No, that made absolutely no change in God that he created the world. How can that possibly be? I mean, it, <clears throat> this is because God is so infinitely real that he created the world from nothing. So the whole, this whole world is nothing. But he created it. He put out energy, didn't he? All these things we're learning about energy. This is incomprehensible. God is too real for that. And therefore, it says, Therefore, it says that Lovin, the bad Lovin, he changed the wages of Yaakov 10 times. This is 10 times, 100 times. What did he do? He said, okay, Yaakov, listen, you work for me. All the speckled sheep are going to be yours. Right? All the speckled sheep. There was no such thing as speckled sheep. No, the sheep never come out speckled. <clears throat> is it? So Yaakov did, and all of a sudden, all the sheep came out, and they were all speckled. He said, look at this, all speckled. He said, well, it's nice, all speckled sheep. Too bad there's no striped ones. You know, you would have made money. Said, but you said speckled ones. No, no, I, I meant the speckled ones go to me. What I meant was striped ones. In fact, I think I said striped. Stripe. said, okay, striped ones. Lovin's laughing to himself. Striped sheep, where do you ever say a striped sheep? A zebra is striped. striped. <clears throat> sure enough, the whole next flock that came out, the whole next, what is it? Litter of, uh, there's such a word like that, of, of, of sheep come out, all of them are striped. <clears throat> so Yaakov said, yeah, well, here, here you go, Lovin. These are all the sheep mine, striped. I said, wow, what a bummer. You just got such bad luck, Yaakov. None of them have circles on them. So, but you said striped. I said striped. I said circles, no? And he did this a hundred times. He changed it, his mascarti, he changed his wages a hundred times. In Koyomar Nakodim, if you said that I will get the 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 the, the, the stripe, the spotted one, so I got spotted, then you changed it to stripes, you said all these levels that of types of sheep, Nakudim, Akudim, Barudim, it says with stripes, with points, with this. <clears throat> in Kabbalah, this is all explained that these are different levels of creation which are higher than the world of Atzilut. Um, they say uh, Barudim is, is Atzilut. Anyway, they're higher than, high, tremendously high levels. of All these came from where? From Lavan. Biridata, when he came down, Bishtal Shalutam, they're called all the names of Akudim and Akudim. They're called, what is it? They get blotches and spots. So this is different levels of godliness, which is not the case in the beginning. Well, Makoram, <coughs> all these different levels of godliness and spiritual God's crown, the inner level of God's crown, the source of God's crown, the diamond on the top of the crown, all these Kabbalistic levels, all of these are just, they're just aspects of God. They are totally negated and they don't even call, call the name. In their source, Lohen, and that's Lovin. Lohen, therefore, Yochol Hu, Lafachmi, Bechinet Akudim, therefore, Lovin had the ability to trans, to change from the spotted ones to the blotted ones to striped ones to this. Lakudim, Lakudim, you could change everything back and forth. Why? Because it's saying that God can change all these spiritual worlds, right and left, up and down, levels with gamatrias, with all these things. These are only aspects of God. But God himself, <clears throat> he does not change at all. And even though that all these worlds are being created, so to speak, uh, within God, within God, but it's not within God. It's not, there's no, we can't possibly understand what's going on over here because we can't create anything. We have nobody created. Why And why can't we create anything? We can just take things and rearrange them, right? We can take energy and make it into mass, mass into energy. We can take sounds and make it into harmony. We can take <clears throat> colors and make it into a picture. We can take atoms and make them react with each other. We can make them do things. But we can't create energy from nothing. Or create something. We can't create. We don't know why. Because we're something. We are things. We ourselves are created. <clears throat> it's something like the, the, in, the, in the Talmud, also later on, there's this thing called the golem, that there were certain great holy rabbis that could create people. How did they create people? By speaking. They knew how to speak, and they said these, whatever is prayers and things like that, and they could create people. But the people that they created could not speak. The people that they created could not create people. 
It's the same thing. God creates us, but we can't create anything. These rabbis that created people, they didn't really create people. They just took dirt and they took this and they could put spirit inside of it. I don't know how you do it. <clears throat> it's the same thing. God creates the worlds. God creates the world, but God himself, why? Because God himself is not a creation. God himself is the source of all being. There's no way of understanding what this is. <laughs> we, our minds cannot possibly comprehend it, but that's the fact. And this God who is above everything, he cares about us. <laughs> that's even more not understandable. The ain't Zashin, nevertheless, God does not change in front of God. I think, Kivyachal, I think, so to speak. I think. Meachar sins or Okay, or Kabbene Yisrael, I don't, I don't think so. All right, because all of the worlds are totally negated in godliness and they're not called anything. So therefore it's not relevant by God to call him that he that God changes by creating the world because the world doesn't really even exist. There's also, that's, where does this all come from? From love him. That's the source of love him. The holy aspect of loving, but zelu umadze, one opposite the other. There's loving of klipa. There's the evil loving. He also changed <clears throat> Yaakov's wages, but that was with how do you say deceit? Hine bechinas loving the kedusha. This aspect of loving of kedusha. Sham. This is the source of all upper mercy. This is above the whole entire order of creation. The Eteruta delay, and when is it? So th now again, let's go back to what we were saying before. Where do we get this original impulse that we want to serve God? Where do we get this? This is from the holy aspect of Lavan. Lavan, which is the essence of God, the whiteness, which is above God. Lavan means white the whiteness of God, which is <coughs> above even the highest possible aspects of, of creation, spiritual, everything like that. This is love and the essence of God. He's there to give inspiration to the Jews that they want to start serving God. They, want, they, don't, they don't know what God is. They have no emotions about God. They have no ideas about God. They got no elect. And all of a sudden they get, of course, you have to have some idea, something like that, right? That's one of the main things of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, that he put these the shluchim all over the world, and they let people know that, hey, there's such a thing as God, and it's possible to serve him, and that he's very user-friendly, and that he's creating us, and that there's nothing except for him, and that he cares about us, and he creates the angels, and all these things, and all these freaky ideas, all of a sudden they become, well, this is just real reality. This is what reality is. It says, this level of love, and we said, it wakes up in the morning. Makarachim, we said above Aristoteles, this is Baboker in the morning. The morning of Abraham. Abraham also says, Vayash came out from Baboker. It says that Abraham also wake up, woke up. Here it says, Vayash came out from Baboker when Abraham went to, to sacrifice his son, Yitzchak. So it says he woke up early in the morning, first thing. Lovin also, it says, Vayash came out from Baboker. That's the name of this. Mimer that we're doing, that Lovin woke up early in the morning and he kissed his daughters and all of his grandchildren, all the tribes. This level of Lovin woke up early in the morning and he drew down mercy that there would be an arousal from above that would instigate us to <clears throat> arouse God. I'm Shachas Rachamim Hubachinus Chesed Avram. He woke up early in the morning in order that there would be this arousal from above that would arouse God to react to us. <clears throat> it's like getting a free gift <clears throat> and getting a reaction or not. Let's say, let, let, maybe I'll take an example. I don't know if this is a good example. <clears throat> Nowadays, they have these little kids. It's a long time. They have little kids that they play, you know, violin and, and, and guitar and whatever is in piano, and they're experts. All of a sudden, they have little kids that they reveal these tremendous abilities that they can play violin like a, you know, like a professional. Okay, but of course, before they did that, they had to practice. So how do they get them to practice? What do they do? They take a little kid. 
and they see he's got a, maybe a little bit of talent or something, maybe no talent at all. Maybe they take a hundred kids, <clears throat> they take them one by one, stand them in front of a crowd, let's uh, put them in front of a piano, and let them pound, they pound on the piano, and everybody in the crowd claps. Whoa, this is really wonderful. This is really great, right? So somebody, so he, now he understands that maybe it's worthwhile that I can really work and then get genuine applause from the crowd. <clears throat> but first of all, there has to be this first original encouragement. <clears throat> and then after that, he'll start to work practicing the piano, and then he gets real true <clears throat> appreciation from the crowd because he gives them pleasure. First of all, the crowd's just doing it for free. He didn't give them anything. It's just cute to see a little kid you know, sitting at the piano, doesn't know what he's doing. <clears throat> so they give him encouragement. <clears throat> but then afterwards, he learns to play piano, and then he really does give them pleasure, and they really do appreciate it. The same thing is over here. God wants us to serve him. We're like these little children sitting in front of the piano. The piano is the Torah and the commandments. God wants us to serve him. <clears throat> so what does he do? He claps. Yay! God gives us encouragement. He encourages us. That's this thing of loving. After that, then there is an arousal from above, above that depends on what we do. After that, we start to work. We start to think. We start to do this. Right? God gave me this inspiration that really he, God does exist and I should try, I should make. And think about it, you sit and you think before you pray <clears throat> to God. Then after that, when you do sit and you think about godliness, you come contemplate, you do the Torah, you do commandments, at least a little bit. So that gives God pleasure. And from that pleasure that God gets, then he gives you an arousal from above, which you deserve, which you, which you earned, so to speak. I mean, as though we really earn anything. I mean, God doesn't owe us anything. We could, we could, you know, do anything we want to. Everything we're getting is for free. But God owes us more. <laughs> you know, we got two eyes. That's a, a, a miracle. I want more, God. I want more. But nevertheless, God does give us more. <clears throat> and he makes it as though we're, our work and effort that we do, it really arouses him to give us more love. And it's genuine. We actually get more love. That's what's Hashkamas Barachamim. This is the level of the kindness of Abraham. <clears throat> That's his level of love. And in some ways, we're going to see the love is even higher than Abraham. <clears throat> like it says, Avas Olam, Avtanu, an eternal love you gave us. God, Avinu Avarachman. God, you are the father of mercy, the merciful father. I'm sorry. That's what it means by Yishnek. That's what it means by Yineshek. That's what it means that Lovan woke up early in the morning and he kissed. His sons. What are the sons? These are the all the tribes. These are his grandsons. He's referring to his grandchildren. That's like his sons. Bechinas Hamshacha. This is drawing down of this arousal from above that we said for free. Ubanotav, and he kissed his loving, kissed his daughters. That's Leah and Rachel. This is what's called the hidden world and the revealed world. We said before. Remember the previous mimer. Shaloche. Call bechinat. All these levels, there has to be, <coughs> first of all, drawing down from Lavan Elyon, the upper Lavan, this upper purity of God. First of all, in a way of Nishikin, of a kiss, as the Vezdavkos Rucha Barucha, clinging of spirit to spirit. It's not that just God, so to speak, touches everybody on the head. He gives a kiss, <clears throat> an, a deep inner connection to every single level of godliness every single Jew to inspire us to want to serve him. The call of Mashpim, Shaim Bikin is Banov, that these are he gives his kiss to all of his <clears throat> daughters, which we said is the revealed worlds, the concealed worlds, his dovkos, and they are Bikin is Banotov to his daughters, which they give a flow and a blessing, this tremendous mercy, Liot, that there should be at the root of the taluy better that afterwards there should be an arousal from above that we earn. So how does it go? First of all, God gives us this blessing for free. That's called lovin from His essence, and that inspires us to work an arousal from below, and then God reacts with a second blessing to us. And but that one we earned. 
That's what it says, Vayavorechotam, that he kissed them and he blessed them. <clears throat> he loved them, kissed his children, that's the arousal, and he blessed them. What is this blessing? What is it like? This is like it says, Vayavorechotam <clears throat> Elohim. It says that God blessed them, Vayomer Lehem, and he said to them, Vayamalua Oretz, to keep sure you should fill the world and you should conquer it. That was like the blessing that he gave to Adam. It says Yaakov fixed up the, the, the mistake that Adam made. Hainu, she had Tosvas Bracha, an additional blessing, and, and drawing this revelation below, Aratel this Hapcha Chashuch Alanahora, that this blessing should not just come to us when we're praying and that it inspires us to do holy things, but it should even be in that that's the kiss that Lavan gave. <clears throat> that inspires our soul and it arouses our emotions and our mind that we <clears throat> cling to God and we want God and we're excited about God. We love God. We're happy with God. That's wonderful. But that's all still in the realm of religion. We want the whole world to feel the oneness of God. And that's what loving, he kissed his sons and, and he blessed them. He gave them the ability to transform the darkness of this world to light. Like it says, by Yavorecheu, <clears throat> like he said, they will be blessed in you. This is the same blessing that God gave to Abraham also, but he repeated it to Yaakov. They will be blessed in you, all of the families of the world, all the human beings, humanity. <clears throat> and your seed. <clears throat> Namely, all of the spiritual levels <clears throat> that have fallen into this world that are confused in this low world, all the sparks of holiness which have been trapped and confused in this world will be in the what we call the breaking of the vessels, which we don't have time now to describe, but we talked about it before, the breaking of the vessels. Uh, that was before the world was created. There was the breaking of the vessels, which that made the potential of <clears throat> evil and confusion in the world. And when Adam ate from the tree, that brought it even further down and etc. Okay. And nevertheless, Yaakov is here to fix it up. And Lavan came and he gave them even more power. He kissed his, uh, his, his grandchildren and he gave them the power that they could elevate all of the, not just themselves, but all of the whole world, to put the whole world into proper place. In other words, to use the world for what God wants it to be used for. That the bad things should be shunned and that the good things should be utilized. The Kedusha Shel Zerah, Yaakov, everything should be elevated by the offspring of Jacob. That's what it says, Vayelech, Vayeshev, Lovin, Lomakomo, and afterwards, after Lovin woke up early in the morning, and then he kissed all of his, his daughters and his grandchildren, which are the tribes. He gave this inspiration into the world, and then he blessed them, which means even more that we have the power to transform the world then it says, Vayashav, Lavan, Limekomo, Lavan went back to his place. Shizman ha'oraz bechinazu, hibaboker, because the time that we can get a little bit of a taste of this Lavan, of this mercy of God that arouses us is in the morning, the time of the prayer of the morning prayer. Of Achri, but after we pray in the morning, this inspiration goes away. Lochach, therefore, tzorich litpalel bakal yom. Therefore, it's necessary to pray every day. Why? Because every day that comes back, this new arousal in the morning, and afterwards it goes back, goes away. The, this inspiration, free inspiration, is not accessible, and we need it. Because without this expression, this inspiration of feeling God, what do we feel? Ourselves. <clears throat> and it becomes more and more obvious that we don't need God, and maybe there is not even such a thing as God. Right? And maybe the, the, the whole idea about God is, is restrictive and it's not good. Right? That's what happens in the course of the day as the world starts to, how do you say, <clears throat> affect us. Therefore, early in the morning, when you set the, your mind to pray, then God helps you, gives us this big shot from above. And Yaakov, then Yaakov could go to his way, on his way. Yaakov, we said, is Yud. The highest level of God's name, the first letter, Yud, he brought it down to Akev, to the heels. Yud Akev, he bring the essence of godliness down into the lowest levels. Halach, that he went and he drew down into Torah and the commandments. 
<coughs> the dark hole, because the Torah is called the way of God, Derech Hashem. So Yaakov, therefore, he set the, <coughs> the stage for the giving of the Torah. And now when the Torah would be given, it wouldn't just be a book, but we would feel the godliness, we would feel the giver of the Torah, we would feel the creator, we would feel this <coughs> tremendously high level of love on the essence and the purpose of all creation, we would feel it in the Torah in order to refine and purify and bless this physical world. That's what Mashiach is going to do. The, 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 the stage is all set. <clears throat> we just have to somehow or other raise up the curtain. <clears throat> and everyone will, the Rebbe will be here, and everyone will point to the Lubavitcher Rebbe and say, Yechi Adonenu, Moreno Rabbeinu, Melech Mashiach, little boy, here's a picture of the Rebbe. He was younger. Okay, now let's learn the speech that the Rebbe gave. Let's turn this off one second. <clears throat> 